coincides with the trends in the country, you know, with, with this need for more education and a bit of a global view. Uh, it's not that we are, it's not a zero-sum game, as I think that, that if we win, then others will lose. It's rather so much is needed that, that you add on uh, more German. And uh, though, I mean, for India, obviously, speaking world is still for the students and so on is, is number one. Uh, the, the figures have been very, very positive in all Germany. Where all have you been to? Where all have you been to? Yeah, yeah, in, in India. India. All this be... Oh, in India? Yes. In India. Yeah. Number one, you never travel enough in India, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but I've tried my best. Yes. And, um, of course, I've been to the, the, the big cities, um, but I have also done, I've gone around quite a bit and tried to do some of the rather a bit unusual or interesting things. For example, this early this year, I, I went to the Kommela in Allahabad. <laughs> I stood knee deep in the water to take my pictures. That was one. And this summer, for example, I went with a group of friends uh, on a Royal Enfield motorbike from Manali to Leh. Oh, so you've been on the Manali Leh bike expedition. Yeah. Yeah. I just mentioned these two because that was a bit In the most <laughs> exotic of what I've done. But I mean, then I was in Elora and Ajanta, uh, Kachurao, yeah. the, the interesting. And, and culturally important sites. Okay, and, so uh, Mamala Puram in Tamil Nadu. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yeah. <laughs> so you've been to so many places. What do you think of India's culture? As could you generalize it as one culture, or would you say that there is there are so many vast cultures? So is there would you say uh, let's say common ground between the cultures, or would you say that very different and and also, as compared to Germany's culture, how yeah, do they compare? That's a very good question. I think the, the, the first thing to understand really is that India, though it is a country, obviously, and a state, in, in many ways it's like a continent. It is a subcontinent, sub but it is also a continent in the sense like Europe is. You know? So when you travel to India, it's like asking yourself, uh, where would I go when I travel to Europe? It's, it's so vast and so diverse and uh, I particularly liked uh, one definition of what is an Indian which I read in the papers recently by this um, Congress politician uh, Mani Shankar Ayer. I think he, 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 and he, he asked what actually is an Indian and he started the answer like this. An Indian is a person who has a culture that is very different from most other Indians. An Indian is a person who likes food that most other Indians do not like. An Indian is a person who speaks a language that most other Indians do not understand. And it went on like this for a while. So in the end he said, so positively, what is it? And he said something, an Indian is a person who accepts any other Indian Anyone. who also said it's, it's an Indian. Yeah, an Indian. <laughs> so I think that was a bit of a long answer too, but but I think you that's what you yes. wanted to hear and that's what I would also say. It's a very, very diverse, diverse. culture, yeah. country yes. from yes. northeast and Ladakh to no, from I understand you can't see your like <laughs> Indians as being one one kind of people, right? What you do. But Germany also is a federal country, yes, sir. not so diverse as India, but we also very much, uh, you know, every 
a federal state has its own identity. I'm from Hamburg, you're from Berlin. 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 Uh, some people may from, be from Bavaria, then they feel very Bavarian. You know? So there's a, it's not Sense so different. Sense of belonging even within the country. So, so in Germany, how are the Indians portrayed? How would you say they like uh, in Germany? Since you have you've been to India and you've had yeah. an understanding, in Germany, how are Indians thought to be? I think you know there is a very interesting uh, development of, of late. Basically, in India, how is the culture of India and Germany? How is yeah. India represented in Germany? I mean, last year, uh, of course, we still could know more about each other. Of Let's course. Put it that way. We are we we are still far short of the potential, but uh, there is a lot more of understanding. Uh, together with the Goethe, we we had a Germany here in India last year, and India had a similar year in Germany. So people got to know much more about it. And you know what I think is very important? It's a in common interest, or you could perhaps say complement complementary interest. We, uh, in Germany, we are an aging society, you know, people get older and older. India is one of the youngest societies. Now, we are a fairly well-developed society. India needs still a lot of education. I think the Prime Minister once said 500 million young Indians by the year 2022 need education. Now, here, interests very much meet. No. Uh, yes. Germany has a lot of uh, to offer in the area of high, education. higher education, education, language training. That's yes, what we, we hear for. Be one of the other questions. And 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 needs a lot of skilled labor. In uh, headmaster was saying in in, in uh, technical areas, uh, biochemistry and and uh, IT. You name it. Uh, so I think uh, that's what is now one of the, the major diplomatic tasks for all of us to make these uh, complementary interests meet for both sides to benefit to the maximum. I mean, this last year, the culture, uh, how much do we know about each other? Yeah, but I think he was also uh, asking for the um, image of India, of India. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. and that I think has changed during the last 10-15 years. I mean, at the time when Rabindranath Tagore was in, in Germany in the 20s, it was a completely different image of India at that time. I think it was very much uh, influenced by uh, philosophy, by literature, etc. And then when when I grew up, India was snake charms and classical Indian music and poverty, mm -hmm. a lot of poverty. I remember that my mother told me, eat up your plate, you know, the poor Indians, they only have one plate of rice uh, a day, you know, but that was in the 50s and 60s, and that has changed quite drastically, you know, I think there are other stereotypes that every Indian is an IT engineer, and uh, yes. <laughs> that Indian growth story will never end at the moment, it's a little bit weak, but uh, so now people know about cities like Bangalore, when I was posted in Bangalore 20 years ago, no one knew it. And then now they now they know that this is an uh, IT hub and the educational hub, etc. So there is much more knowledge, and the Indian government could do much more. I mean, when they have like these uh, Indian uh, weeks or uh, festivals, Indian festivals, they still send too much classical Indian dance and classical Indian music. There's so much contemporary uh, culture in India, but that has a hard time to be. Uh, uh, transported abroad, so I think if that would happen, then people would open up even more like yeah. contemporary art is extremely well known internationally, but one doesn't really, a normal German would not really associate. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And what about football? I mean, India's. We just <laughs> lost the right guy. The, we just lost our finals against Afghanistan in the, the, Asian, the South Asian, South Asian Cup. Cup, and Germany is doing well for itself in that field. Not so, 
I mean, uh, don't challenge us on cricket, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. On, on, uh, uh, also, you asked me about my trips. One of my um, very first trips was, was I was invited by the chief minister of Punjab to attend the international championship in Kabaddi <laughs> uh, in Ludhiana. Okay. <laughs> and I asked my cultural guy, what is this? <laughs> and he explained it to me and I found it interesting. I said, come on, I have to see it. Because astonishingly, apparently, there was supposed to be a German team. <laughs> and, and there was. Of course, it was a team made up of Indian, I mean, uh, Germans from, from, from the area. And they lost. <laughs> so what I want to say, each nation has their favorite sports and exactly. their areas where they are good at. For Germany, that has been football and football and football. Later on, a bit of tennis. tennis. I mean, football, football that is the game in Germany. By the way, the I brought you game. this for your football. <laughs> yeah, these are little footballs. Germany, Germany was also always good in hockey. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that is it's true. It's not very popular, but the internationally they are good. Yeah. When I grew up in, I think it was uh, the Olympics, 68 or so, uh, I'm not quite sure that it was either India and Germany in the finals. That's one sport like, where we can yeah, clash yeah, yeah, at a level. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And there's even a dynasty. I think now the, the great-grandson is one of the big players in the hockey team. There's one family which dominates the national team. Okay. You know why I always thought that football, and I'm quite sure that football will grow in India little by little. It does already. It is, yes, yes. Because it is, it is so easy. You know? Football, you need this, and then That's you go. It, yeah. you, know? you don't even need goalposts, you can always uh, improvise. You know? <laughs> yes. it, it, it is such an easy sport and yet so much fun. So I was always thinking football is good for a nation because it doesn't cost much money and, and it makes the people happy. Yeah, but as you see in Brazil and in South America, yeah. countries, they yeah. play they everywhere. Play everywhere. 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 We had a game last year that was a sponsored game. Uh, the the full-size team of Bayern Munich against uh, the Indian national team. In mm -hmm. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I won't tell you. <laughs> yeah, um, so, what are your views of the Indian democratic system? And how does it compare to your uh, government? I think you now the time has come where we have to go to the function. <laughs> <laughs> no, again, uh, it, it, it is interesting for a German, as I told you, the, we have a federal system, India has a very federal system, India is a large and old democracy, we have a, uh, experienced democracy, we have a lot of, um, we normally have coalition governments, I mean just in a few days there will be elections in Germany, and it will be again interesting to watch. We also have two major parties, one more to the right, one more to the left, like, I mean, you could say Congress and BGP, which are the two major pillars, and we have smaller parties. Now, that's more or less where the similarity ends, because uh, our system is not so complex. Okay. All these, uh, basically, there are about four or five, maximum six parties, uh, all together, Th th that play a role and uh, still it can be difficult to find the right coalition uh, that makes a government but I think um, we will be looking with even more or keener interest to the next election here because as far as what I follow I mean I, I, I listen to the analysts that can be quite an interesting race between these two big blocks and then what everybody says, this regional third block, and, and where it will go. But I mean, having said that, a, a working democracy is change, 
all the time, movement, different coalitions, uh, complete stability, one government once for all, uh, that's not normally not in a democracy. India has had these changes all the time, so let's see what happens next. And that's it's the working. Well, that's the well-balanced diplomatic answer. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a diplomat, so I could only say that I think what what I pick up from Indian friends, the, the formally the system is very good in India. Unfortunately, the politicians are not so good. The politicians, the elite, the political elite, I think there there's a huge problem because of accountability, because of you know you know all the all the issues. So if I, and, and no one really has an answer to that, how that would be addressed, how the political elite and their ethics would change, and all the connections with business, etc. This is something if that could be changed, I think India would benefit enormously, because all the, the, the structure is there, the, the, the procedures are there, only it all works with people. If people only think of themselves and their clout, then difficult, but that you know much better than you wish. So have any of you had a chance to interact with any of the German students from this school? No, not yet. You are one, right? I was one. Uh, till class 10, I was one. Okay. Eleven, eight, yes. Though you have had a chance to interact with Indian students who study German. Yes, yes. What do you think about the, the accent yeah. of Germany? The German accent. The German accent compared to the Indian German accent. German accent. No, I mean, uh, every language produces a certain accent. I have an accent in English. Uh, even our different regions have different accents. Accent. I think an accent is uh, nothing bad at all. It gives a little bit of flavor to your, your as long as you are well understood, of course. <laughs> if your accent becomes so bad that people can't understand you, then, then that's a different story. But what I would really say is that Indian students, in my eyes, are very, very gifted for languages. And I always have a, a, a kind of flippant explanation for it. I, 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 I always say Indians normally are an Indian is born trilingual. It's know? true. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, true. It is Hindi, most of the time one other, other local language, language and, and then Indian. very quickly also English. You know? yes. So from a very early age, a, a, a child in India knows what language is. You know, it, it, that seems to you, uh, uh, what should I say, I mean, understood. But when you think of a country, let, let's take, for example, my last posting was London. So I served in the UK. An average Britisher has English and English and English. No? That's the first three languages. No, no. And, I mean, <laughs> and, and when you have just one language, then you do not even have the notion of what another language means. And I think that is something which in India is learned so early on. Yes, so that's why they, they have an understanding for languages. And that's why I also think that's, by the way, a plea I would like to make. German has the reputation of being not an easy language to learn. But if you have already a fairly broad linguistic background, plus our old Sanskrit grammar relation, you know, it's the Sanskrit which is, is uh, I mean, Max Müller, the, the, the Indologist who, who In fact, was I was researching, writer. it turns out, India and Germany um, have a really nice language, linguistic relationship. Yeah. Uh, most of our, uh, most of our <coughs> religious texts, most of our Sanskrit texts have been decoded, have been like translated into Hindi uh, yeah. from German because we did not have By the German actual... People. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently, I mean, uh, unfortunately, that is one of my many shortcomings. I do not speak neither Hindi nor Sanskrit. <laughs> but I once we 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 analyzed it a little bit from the books, and I was really stunned to see how much the logic of Sanskrit apparently is similar to the logic in the German language. There was 
I, I mean, when the, the, the German word for to grasp yeah, is greifen. Yeah? Greifen. Greifen. And if I'm not mistaken, there was a word in Sanskrit which sounded like grip or grifan or something like it this. Grand. Grand also means to yeah. see. Yeah, okay. You're, you're, you're your mama, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's, uh, that's exactly what. And then the same, not only that, this is that. Mm -hmm. Then in the, at the next level, from the grasp, greifen, we have begreifen, which means understand. You know, I, 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 I take it and I understand it. And apparently, again, the Sanskrit has exactly that same logic. And there are lots of examples of that similarity. So, I mean, we are natural partners. The answer, that answer part comes from same as the yeah. Yeah. Also, when I was studying, when I started studying German, I always felt that the conjugations in German and Hindi were so much alike. Like, I found German more similar to Hindi than I found it to English. Yeah. So, I found that easier to grasp. Yeah. I think such remarks as yours are important because often people think, ah, oh, German is so difficult. How did you find it? Um, Apart from what you just said. I thought if like in the beginning if I if I learned the basics very well, then later in class ninth and tenth after two three years uh, I didn't find it very good. So what is the ideology behind the past project that has been launched Uh I'm going to tell you that right in the in okay. the uh, uh, Function. No, I wouldn't say there is an ideology behind this. It's basically, it's basically the, uh, the idea to support schools worldwide which already teach German and to just open up more avenues for teaching German and to facilitate schools, um, good, good high level schools to introduce German. That was an initiative by the former German uh, foreign minister, and of course, we have been doing that. In many countries for many years, but then this gave an additional push. That's the idea. Plus, then also what people also be, or you, the, the German students have become part of the international connectivity with youth camps and with uh, online projects and partner schools in Germany. Not only in Germany, partner schools everywhere in the world where the German the German is taught. So that the idea is really to make German more attractive um, and to connect between uh, German students. Around the world. That works very well. And the youth camp thing, what do you think of the youth camp? I think it's sponsored also by the project. So yeah, no, I, I think you, you know much better than I do what, uh, <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> what, what's happening. I'm also not a German student. No, no, but I mean, if there were students who took part and those yeah. who went to other countries and your principal just said how moving it was to have uh, German students from Afghanistan and giving her, uh, not only her perspective on German, but just bringing her life experience uh, during the war in, in Afghanistan. I mean, all these are um, occasions where you meet and exchange far beyond the language issue, and that's the idea. I mean, it's not all connected. Language is there to communicate, and once you interact, you commu communicate about everything which is of value for all of you. So, learn German, then you also be part of it again. <laughs> Too late, huh? So you, you, you're writing something for the school magazine, is that right? Yes, or, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And this lady has done German, the two of you haven't. I and mean, she's also part, part of the French. We've part of the school magazine also. She's yeah, yeah, part of the Asian No, I think um, our request, if possible, would be to make a plea for German, you know? But not, as I said, not in the sense of instead of, something else, you know? It's more of an Whoever, option. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think the president of, of the Goethe Institute once created this nice slogan, English a must, German a plus. In, in, in German that sounds even better. In English ein muss, Deutsch ein plus. Yeah? It's, it rhymes completely. And uh, the understanding is every, you, you go to Germany, every average mildly well-educated kid speaks some English because the understanding is clear 
you must speak English now. There is, it's, it's the world language. Yes, yes. So you have that already. That's already a given. Okay. But if you want to get a bit deeper into other cultures, and in, as far as Germany is concerned, I would say even beyond Germany, into Europe, where Germany is a very important country, right in the middle of Europe, um, it opens up uh, a whole new environment and world. And of course also, uh, when you're looking for, I mean, you could always either talk in general, more philosophically, or really down to business. You want to make it in the world. Of course you can do it with English. But if in addition to that, yeah. English, many, many come with English. You have a skill in, a, in another very important language. And I mean, our aim at the moment is to make German number one foreign language in India. I mean, apart from English, obviously, it's not a foreign language. <laughs> then that is a very big plus. And I think uh, that's why we are here. And if uh, we, we try to make that plea, and maybe in, if, if the arguments are good enough, you, you can also put that in your magazine and appeal to the others to follow so the good example. So I think that definitely happened because <laughs> um, I was, um, in my economics class, my economics teacher made this comment that uh, we were talking and he said that Germany and France are the next growing economies and there's a lot of opportunity for Indians who know German and French yeah, and absolutely. who can go there and work. And that's what he said. And he said that if you know German, you can uh, do really well in German. Yeah.